few months ago, I was having a conversation with a family member, and the topic switched from Notre Dame football to climate change. Before that conversation, I was under the impression that people understood certain things about climate change. For example, that humans have been the main cause of this rapid rise in global average temperatures that we've seen in the past few centuries. I just come back from a climate change course that summer, so I felt pretty prepared to respond to anything. But what I didn't realize was that many people choose to ignore the dirty truth about climate change, or they just don't have enough knowledge to accept it. After multiple family members told me that they believe that human actions do not impact the climate of our Earth, I was shocked. I was forced to recognize how little certain people know or want to believe about this phenomenon. So I became passionate about debunking commonly held climate myths. We're doing this for our children and our children's children. That's something I hear a lot as motivation for climate action, which I think is hilarious because the intent is to be selfless and give the next generation the lives they deserve. But in reality, climate action is actually selfish. Why? Because climate change is severe now, and it will lead to devastating and disastrous effects within our lifetimes if we don't take a big step back and reconsider what we're doing here. We really can't wait for the next generation to deal with our issues, because by then, it will just be too late. First thing I thought of when I was creating my talk that directly impacted us here at Marist is snow or rather, the absence of it. I miss snow. I know we all do. I can still remember making snowmen on my front lawn every single year when I was little. But in recent years, we've had less than flurries. Due to a weakening polar vortex and unstable jet stream, erratic and extreme weather conditions across the country have become common. Places like Texas have had extreme cold flashes, while here in Georgia, we're in the middle of our second longest snow drought, as it hasn't snowed since 2018. There are so many reasons for us to care about the health of our people and our planet and want to make changes. As teens living in the century, we have gotten so used to the degradation of our environment, from pollution to natural disasters and commercialization of land to cutting down trees on our very own backyards, that we have forgotten how much of an impact our actions have on the Earth. I stumbled upon the CO2 emission calculator as part of my homework for the climate change course I took this summer. So I decided to fill it out, and I got some help from my family and legal documents. And this calculator spit out a whopping 24 metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. That is equal to burning almost 30,000 pounds of coal. And that was only my personal emissions in a single year. That means that over the course of my entire life, I've contributed over 400 tons of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere so far. And I have no one to blame but myself and my own actions. And to put this in perspective, the average carbon footprint of an American in one year is 16 tons. Worldwide, it's four. So how is my footprint of 24 tons so much higher? One of my biggest contributors of carbon dioxide equivalent is pretty surprising, air travel. You probably aren't thinking about climate change as you sip a ginger ale and watch Iron Man on your flight. And even though I only fly a few times a year, this really gave me a sense for the distances traveled in the air. A flight, let's say, to Oregon is around 4,000 miles round trip. Imagine driving that in a car. And I'm not saying cancel your Thanksgiving plans, but we need to know our impact and do as best as we can to offset it. Car fuel and natural gas are more commonly known to be bad for the environment. But what about clothing and meat? They're both up there in my chart, which isn't here right now, but that's okay. Um, and they are things we live with every single day and rarely think about. And these things, it seems so hard to change things like these that we're so used to living with, but with a commitment to improving our lifestyles, we can make a positive impact in our communities and on our planet. Each of us is one out of 7.8 billion people eating, sleeping, and exhaling carbon dioxide every single day. There's not much we can do to make an impact on everyone in the world, but our impacts on our smaller communities make it tell a different story. 
we can focus on lessening our personal impacts by establishing healthy habits in our everyday lives and making necessary changes to our routines. One way we can reduce our carbon footprints is by eating a low carbon diet. For me, that looks like choosing meals with less meat or dairy, buying organic produce, and eating seasonal foods. 43% of food waste actually comes from households, like the ones we go home to after school and work every single day. Composting your food waste is such an easy and affordable solution. We even have compost bins at Marist. Another way we can reduce our carbon footprint is by watching what we buy. Consumerism is a big part of today's society, and it sometimes feels like the world revolves around material possessions. Fast fashion stores like Shein and H&M prey on our desires to get cheap and trendy clothing. Instead of buying something new for my talk today, I actually rented this dress from an online website that offsets the carbon emissions from shipping. Or what if we could organize a thrift your clothes at school day to encourage other people to buy used clothes for cheaper and give back to the community? Making changes to our lifestyles is crucial to our success in the fight against climate change. Along with advocacy, the easiest and possibly most important way to make an impact on the environment, other than through our own actions, is bringing awareness to the severity of the crisis and the need for action. Teenagers in our generation have the ability to influence other people in positive ways, especially with social media. Post something on your story. Tell your friends. Spread the news. You can be the one in control of your carbon footprint by making the right choices to live sustainably. Changes such as these have the possibility of decreasing my carbon emissions by up to 10 metric tons every single year. I encourage you to try to calculate your own environmental footprint and learn what you can about the impact that your actions have on the earth and how you can lessen them. I say this because if all of us were to indulge in simply a few of these possible solutions, the future is looking really bright for our generation. Thank you.